The hope had been initially that the AKP government, the current governing party in Turkey, would reverse some of these policies. They came into office with a sort of brothership platform in 2002, 2003, claiming that they were interested in engaging um, in peace talks to end the long-standing civil conflict, and in addition, reaching out, incorporating Kurdish demands, becoming much more flexible and pluralist in their orientation to political organizing to language rights, uh, to cultural rights, and so on. And at one point, the current prime minister, uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, even in 2005, made a public statement saying that the Kurdish problem is a Turkish problem, it's my problem. In other words, identifying that there is a Kurdish community, that there is a genuine political problem in our political community in Turkey, and that it was something that the civilian government should and must address. Uh, from that time, from that you know high point of 2005, we've seen nothing but reversal, uh, including beginning at the end of 2009, a really uh, draconian campaign allegedly um, targeting this KCK, but in fact a much, much broader operation targeting, as I said, the heart of the possibility of political organizing in the Kurdish community. So this period began with the closure of what was then the principal pro-Kurdish political party um, seated in government. I mean, uh, this was a party that actually had parliamentary seats. The DTP was closed by the Turkish Constitutional Court. Now, we could say that that wasn't something directly under the control of the AKP government. In fact, that same Turkish Constitutional Court had initiated a case um, in order to determine whether or not to close the AKP party. The governing party had also been threatened with party closure at the same time. So basically, two cases were initiated, one against the AKP, one against the DTP. The case against the AKP ended um, sort of favorably for the AKP, roughly. They were almost closed, one vote shy of being closed, but uh, they had to pay fines. They were accused of being a focal point of anti-secular activism in Turkey. The DTP did not have the same benefit. They were, in fact, closed. This is a very common tactic in Turkey, the closure of political parties. And indeed, the parliamentarians that were members of the DTP anticipated this and had already created a reserve political party the BDP, which is the current pro-Kurdish political party in the Turkish uh, political arena and is currently seated in um, parliament today. The BDP was formed immediately uh, before the DTP was closed and persons who were part of the DTP transferred to the BDP. But at the time of the DTP closure, not only did this current government, the AKP, fail to denounce the Turkish Constitutional Court for engaging in this, they also allowed the security services, allowed or directed, it's hard to say uh, in 2009, which was the case, to engage in mass arrests of mayors, political uh, party affiliates, organizers, and so forth, activists, in uh, December of 2009 throughout the... Kurdish area, so throughout the southeast. And this was really the beginning of what today, since that time, has witnessed over 2,000 people detained as part of these uh, anti-KCK supposedly operations. And this has reached now to the point that we're far outside of the southeastern provinces of Turkey. It's reaching, for example, progressive publishing houses, academics who work on this question, anybody basically who um, is engaged in left politics with a and is pro-Kurdish is now at risk and it's generated tremendous unease and fear not only obviously in the Kurdish community but also among liberals throughout Turkey and some very notable figures have most recently been arrested this past month so in October of 2011, Ayşe Baktay and Recep Zarakoğlu, both of them very progressive publishers based in Istanbul, have been um, taken into custody. The son of Recep Zarakoğlu, Deniz Zarakoğlu, who's a, a graduate student working um, at an Istanbul university, was taken in for his uh, the fact that he had worked as a political organizer um, associated with the BDP, which is a legal political party in Turkey. Uh, and now, most recently, about five days ago, we have a constitutional law professor, Professor Bushra Arsanla, who was um, advising the BDP, again, the sitting pro-Kurdish political party, which is part of our um, government, which is actually in parliament, uh, she was advising them on constitutional law matters because the current government is undertaking a new civilian constitutional project and the BDP as a party that's in parliament is of course interested in being advised on constitutional law matters in connection to that um, effort. And so she was their advisor and now she, for her troubles and for the fact of her academic expertise and her willingness to work with the BDP, has found herself detained.